Hi, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor, and I've created three PowerPoint presentations recently for three different lectures, and two of them were for, were for doctors. And I want to share with you some of these slides because I came to a realization that um, there were two founding fathers, if you will, of medicine who approached treatment in the same way. And I'll also reference a, another resource. But you combine these approaches, these three steps, to follow the physiology. So the first person that we're going to talk about is Dr. Henry Harrower. And he came out with this big textbook in 1931. And he said, number one, the fundamental cause should be discovered and controlled, meaning a patient walks in to see me or any other doctor. You've got to find out why, what the cause is and why they feel the way that they do. Number two is endocrine therapy to address the clinical picture. These are paraphrases of Dr. Harrower's words, and uh, he preferred, and so he was an endocrinologist, he's the father of endocrinology, and he preferred providing multiple glands as a therapy instead of just one. But um, number three is reduce the lactic acidosis, and he said to do this by basic diet changes and taking minerals. He used the term alkalize, and there are two ways to address the lactic acidosis, and he says one a better metabolism. I put in the word ketosis because in 1931, with the way the diet was, first of all, it was all organic. Well, it wasn't all organic, but most of it was. But uh, people were going into ketosis because they weren't eating as much food and they had um, less carbohydrate intake overall. And then number two, to address lactic acidosis, he's saying add mineral salts, which are alkaline. But unfortunately, they do not address the underlying cause and they do not address the endocrine reaction to that cause. So those are so we have three things going on that need to be treated. Number one, lactic acidosis. Number two, the cause. Number three, the clinical picture. And since he was an endocrinologist, he used uh, endocrinology and hormones as the subject of the clinical picture. The next person to talk about is Dr. Otto Warburg. He's the father of physiology. And he wrote this in the 30s. I can't really pinpoint the year. It could have been in the early 40s, but I think it's in the 30s. And so he says, number one, keep the speed of the bloodstream so high that the venous blood still contains sufficient oxygen. So he's addressing lactic acidosis here. And I put in parentheses, exercise and having clean blood can do that. And then he says to keep high the concentration of hemoglobin in the blood, therefore the blood can carry oxygen very easily. So I put in parentheses, no anemia. And then he says to add always to the food B vitamins. So when you keep the oxygen up in the blood, and, you, and then you add the B vitamins, the B vitamins decrease lactic acid. That's how you fix lactic acidosis. So Warburg knew that, and this is his recommendation. Then number three, at the same time, ex exogenous carcinogens, meaning external toxins from your environment, are excluded rigorously keep them out of your life and so I put in parentheses detox we live in a very toxic environment now compared to when he wrote these words and you want to have a clean living as much as you can so here he's addressing the cause with number three and he's addressing lactic acidosis for no with number one and two he's not addressing the clinical picture but you know doctors are trying to fix the clinical picture all the time anyways because that's what uh, you're complaining of those are your symptoms and so there's all kinds of anti-inflammatories and you know pain medications antidepressants on and on and on all these drugs and a lot of uh, nutraceuticals are sort of designed to treat the symptom as opposed to treating the cause and there's not much out there that treats the lactic acidosis although I, ha I have some great supplements for that the last reference is cancertutor.com, T-U-T-O-R, and they specialize in uh, researching alternative cancer therapies. And what they say on the first page is that on day one of a diagnosis of cancer, you have to take care of the lactic acidosis and the microbes in the bloodstream. That is top priority. So the microbes could be parasites, fungus, virus, or bacteria. And the lactic acidosis causes tremendous pain and half the people with cancer die from it. So they don't necessarily die from the tumor or the cancer, but it's from the lactic acidosis. And I've said that before in uh, my videos and my lectures. And that brings us to the conclusion here with the last slide about following the physiology. So the body breaks down in a predictable way, and you can reverse it in a step-by-step -step process. 
and you have to address all three of these steps in order to get the uh, health back up. And so your doctor, whether it's an alternative doctor doing muscle testing or whatever, reading crystals or tea leaves or, or if your doctor is running lab tests and MRIs and CT scans, the point is the same. You've got to address these three things. So number one, unburden the body of lactic acidosis. Ketosis is extremely helpful for this and also lots and lots of vegetables or vegetable juicing. And then uh, supplements. There's only a few supplements that really take care of lactic acidosis. And my two favorites are from Standard Process. And the other four or six are from Standard Process. Otherwise, I don't know of any on the market. Number two, address the symptom picture. That means nourish the organs or tissues that need the most help, mostly using nutritional support. So an example of this would be glucosamine sulfate for joints or maybe some enzymes to help the pancreas, um, vitamin D, you know, taking minerals. And notice these are all nutritional s support products I'm talking about. Of course, really good food. And there's not a drug that supports tissue. There's drugs that kill things like bacteria, and there's drugs that block metabolic pathways in the body. And I think medicine really has it backwards when they're trying to uh, address chronic, uh, chronic illness. Number three, address the underlying cause. So in our modern times, it's mold, metals and chemicals, and hidden immune challenges. So if you have bronchitis and you're gasping for breath and you got mucus, that's not hidden. You can go to the urgent care, they'll give you antibiotics. But a hidden infection is like in your root canal that you got 10 years ago. Or it could be a slight amount of infection dispersed throughout your lungs that's sort of subclinical or maybe just in one, one location of your lungs. A hidden infection would be um, a little bit of dysbiosis, meaning unfriendly bacteria in your gut. It could just be one small section of your gut, like the lower part. And I ask people this all the time, does your bloating occur higher or lower? And it does really matter. So these are the three things to do um, to get your health back. Hey, it's Dr. Schmidt. Do you want to tour my studio? There it is. There's a like button, a subscribe button, a notifications bell, and I have a Patreon page. So click on all those. But the most important button is the share arrow because there are other people that you know who are looking for good answers for health improvement. Thanks for watching.